Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 3, Lesson 6, talking today about estimating areas. We're moving past the circumference stuff into areas. And so area, we're talking not about how far around we go around an object, but we're talking about the space inside of that object there today. Okay, so we're going to do some estimating, first of all, some weird shapes is what we're looking at today. We began with some mental calculations to kind of figure out a strategy to make each calculation maybe a little more mentally, right? So perhaps you look at something like this and you think, well, that's maybe about 600, and this one is about 90. If you combine it mentally, you might just go an estimate might be 690, but we know we're not going to, if they want to get it accurate there, we don't want to leave it there because we added one there, we added four three there to make that rounding which means we added a total of four so and in reality we might say this is really 686 to get that figured out there this one here is actually a good problem to look at because it really is going to apply to what we're doing today in terms of estimating right 99 is pretty close to 100 so if i make it a little bit bigger and multiply by 75 i have a nice 7500 number there now all i have to do is take away one of those 75s to come up with, in this case here, um, 7,425 for the actual number there. So sometimes it's nice just to go a little bit larger and take away the excess in order to solve for a, a problem here. And that's going to be one of the big strategies you're going to see today as you go through this lesson on um, estimating some areas. So they begin first of all with a house floor plan that looks something like this. Okay. All these kind of irregular shapes there, or like we said before, weird shapes. So a couple things that you want to consider. First of all, the length from here to here is 33. So if I was to finish this off and go to there, I know that this added part is 7, which tells me that the entire length of this house is 40 feet from side to side. Okay, 33 plus 7 gives me that extra bit there, 7, so I have 40. In terms of a height, if I pull this wall out to there and extend that there to there, this is an eight. So 26 plus eight combined together to make 34 feet. So the reality is, is that I actually have a house in this shape here that is a 34 by 40 house, right? 16, 12, 13. So I have 1360 is what I have there, right? 34, yep, good shape. So 1360, okay, is my, my area. Again, this goes back to our initial mental calculation. Instead of using 99, I used 100. So here, instead of doing all these little ones, I'm gonna go a little bit big, and now I'm gonna take away what's left. So I'm gonna take away, in this case here, I have to take away this chunk, this is a 12 by 8 rectangle. Well, 12 times 8 is 96. So I'm going to subtract 96. Over here, I have a 7 by 5.5. 7 times 5.5 is going to be 38.5 in that space there. So I'm going to subtract 38.5. Now, I also have this balcony or this chunk here. I have a chunk, but I do need to include the balcony. Okay, so first let me find out what the area of this triangle is. This triangle is a little bit tricky at first. I have a length here of 12 and a length there of 8.5. I know the total length is 40. So what I have is 12 plus 8 is 20.5. So if I did 40 minus 20.5, the remaining will be my length here, which is 19.5. Okay, that's my length of that side, that wall. I can do the same thing here as well. In this case, the whole thing was 34, right? This whole length right here is 34 from here to here. And I can subtract though, nine and five is 14.5. So subtract 14.5 from 34 and you end up with also 19.5. So I actually have an equilateral triangle right here, or sorry, I have an isosceles triangle right here. So I could find the area of that space by doing one half of the base times the height. One half of 19.5 times 19.5. And when I do that math there, what I end up with is, I think it's gonna be 190. I'm trying to find my notes here real quick, sorry. So I end up with 19.5 times 19.5 divided by two. Yep, and we have 190 
or so. So I'm going to subtract 190 from that as well. I could do a 0.125 and include that, but it's probably too much information. But I need to then add back in the balcony because even though I subtract all that, I got to put the balcony back. So I'm going to add that back. The balcony is 11 by, not by 4, which is 44. Okay? So I started with my larger re rectangle, 1360. I subtract this corner. I subtract that corner. I subtract the entire rectangle and then I add back the balcony to find out the approximate area of the house. So I do that here, 1360 minus 96 minus 38.5 uh, minus 190.125 and add back the 44 and that gives me 1079.375 and that's probably feet and square feet there. So my approximate value of this is going to be 1,079.3. Okay, so that's about what I got, and hope that's pretty close to right. Um, if I did something a little wrong, you might catch my error. That does happen, and that's okay. So that's a uh, way of going about that one right there. Okay, let's look at the next one. For the next one, you have a map of Nevada. And you're going to estimate the area of Nevada in square miles. Square miles. Explain and show your reasoning. So when I look at this this map here, what I look at is I go, well, I could pretty much cut this right there, which they're doing with a 270, and I have a rectangle and a triangle. Okay. So if the whole thing is 490, then what I have right here is the 490 minus the 270 which is 220. So this length is 220 and that's 320. So 320 times a 220, 320 220 is gonna equal 70,400. That's the area of the rectangle. Over here, I can do one half of the base, which is 320, right? That's the base there, times the height, which is here to here, times 270. And one half of, of 320 times 270 is going to be 43,200. So when I take this and that and combine those together, that tells me my total area, which is 113,600, and this is miles squared, okay, or square miles. Again, this is just an approximate there. It's not going to be perfect because really it should be probably less than that because this triangle should continue there and I'm missing kind of a chunk of the triangle. So it might be more like 110,000. Again, it's just an approximate value. It's an estimate. It doesn't have to be perfect. So an estimate just gets you pretty close there. Okay. Um, in terms of this question here, which is are you ready for more? Um, mine don't quite have the right colors there. But what you can notice is that you do have these three little chunks here, and it says these chunks are equal to what's inside of there. If you drew a little line like so, if you went like this and went like this, oops, and this, and this, you notice that what you end up with here are three matching shapes. This shape is the same as that shape, this is the same as that, and that is the same as that. Okay? So those all equal the same thing. So it says the two triangles are equilateral, the little one and the big one, and the three pink regions are identical, so these are all the same. And the blue equilateral triangle is the same area, so the blue has the same area as those ones, which we can see how that works there. What's the ratio of the sides of the two equilateral triangles? So what we really have is when we look at this, we can see that I have one, two, three, four is my length of this side compared to the two of here. So my ratio is a four to two or reduced down, my ratio is really a two to one ratio to go side to side. And so you can kind of look at that, how that works out there to break it apart. So that's my chunking of there to get my four sides there and my two sides there. Let's turn the page and look at our summary. Okay, basically here we go. It says we can find the area of some complex polygons by surrounding them with a simple polygon like a rectangle. 
like so. And then we can remove the corners, whatever piece it needs to be, right? So we can estimate the area of irregular shapes by approximating them with a polygon and find the area of the polygon. And that's the idea. We just get an idea of a shape like this and say, well, I don't know exactly what that, that area is gonna be, but I have a rectangle and I have a triangle. If I put that together, it's gonna get me close. So you can surround it and then subtract what you're not gonna keep, or you can use some approximate shapes of polygons you do know, rectangles and triangles, to be able to solve for some areas there. Let's take a look at your homework and see how this works. Okay, so we begin first of all with estimating area. Let's start with our strategy, which is to enclose something in a larger rectangle. Okay, so make it one big box. By making it one big box, this length here was four. I had one, so it becomes a five, right? So I have a length of five. Here was two, that three goes there, or three there. So three there becomes a six. So initially, I have an area of 30 for my whole box. Now I'm gonna subtract the other stuff to find out what the area is. So I'm gonna get rid of this space here, and that space, and this space, okay? Put my three down here for now. So this length right here, I know that this is two, and that is one, which makes that a one right there. And because this is two and this whole thing is three, this is a one. So the area of this square is simply one. Okay, so there's one value there. This line is a three. A three by one grid there becomes three. So I'm gonna get rid of a three. Minus one, minus three. Then I have this one. I knew that the whole thing is five. Here's a two, here's a one. So that means I have three. What's left is two. So three times two is six. So I'm gonna subtract six. So I have six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So in total, I'm gonna subtract 10 from my 30. So 30 minus 10 equals 20 centimeters squared. And that becomes my solution for the actual area of that polygon. Okay, let's look at number two. It says draw polygons on the map that could be used to approximate the, uh, the area of Virginia. Now, how you go about this is kind of up to you. What do you see? For me, when I looked at this, I saw, well, I have a, a base down here. And if I look at kind of like the point being here, I really have a triangle. And again, this is how I see it. A triangle like that with, if I drew a line here, I can make a height there. So I saw it as a triangle. I know that in my teacher's book, it showed it as a couple different shapes, showed some smaller triangles. This is gonna to be too large because obviously I'm adding some, some additional area that I don't need throughout this, okay? So my approximation here might be a little bit too large. What I need to know though, is I would need to know what the base would be here, and I would need to know this height right there in order to get some sort of approximate value to find out the uh, area of Virginia of one half of the base times the height. And that's how I would go about doing that there. But you might think of a different way and that's just fine. Number three, Jada's bike wheels have a diameter, diameter of 20 inches. How far does she travel if the wheels rotate 37 times? So we're gonna look talking about how far she, her distance, her circumference goes in a line forever and ever. If we do pi times the diameter times, in this case here, 37 times. So we take our 3.14, we're gonna multiply that by the diameter of 20 inches, and we're gonna do that 37 times. And when we do that, we find out that it's gonna go a total of 2,323.6 inches, is how far she's gonna go 37 times. If I wanna turn that into feet, if I wanna turn it into feet, then I would divide by 12, okay, or multiply by 1 12th, however you wanna think about that. And that's gonna tell me that it could be 1,900, sorry, 1,193.6 feet is how far she would go. So either in inches or in feet, depending on which one you wanna leave it in there. 
Okay, let's look at the next page, number four. It says the radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 or 6,400 kilometers. Okay, so let's say that's the Earth, and my radius from here to here is 6,400 kilometers. The equator is a circle around the Earth, dividing in a northern and southern hemisphere. The center of the Earth is also the center of the equator. What is the equator? So the equator in this case here, we're going to call it our circumference. Our circumference is going to equal 2 pi r. And we want to use 2 pi r this time because they gave us the radius, right? So we can plug that in and say 2 times 3.14 times our radius, which is 6400. Okay, and when I do the math on all that stuff there, this equals, uh, equals 40,192 kilometers becomes the circumference around the Earth. So it's just a simple plugging in 2 times the radius, 6400 times the value of pi for 40,000 or so kilometers. All right, and finally, a little review from Unit 2. Here are several recipes for sparkling lemonade. Each recipe describe how many tablespoons of lemonade per water. So lemonade per, so L per water, right? So we begin with, it says here, four tablespoons and 12 cups. That's a four lemonade to 12 cups of water, which becomes what we would say? One third tablespoons of lemonade per water is the idea. So one third there. For this one, four tablespoons lemonade and six cups. That's a four to six cup there which reduces to two thirds tablespoons of lemonade per one cup of water. And this one here, we have three tablespoons of lemonade and five cups, can't reduce it, so we should leave it there. Three and three to five. And this one here, we have one half tablespoons to three fourths. So this is the same as writing one half, or one half, sorry, divided by three fourths which is the same as saying one half times four over three, which becomes four over six, which becomes two thirds tablespoons of lemonade mix for every cup of water. So that's what we have for a lemonade mix per one cup of water there. All right, hope that helps you out. Have a great day, see you next time.